You see, prohibition didn't start until 1990. But my father, God rest his soul, and my uncles had been bootlegging in the, the Red Bank 30 years before that. We wanted to start to create some of the historical characters and figures that were here during that time period. It's one of the things that you have to realize or you start to understand is that all of these great historical figures that, that came out of Red Bank, they didn't exist in a vacuum. You know, they existed at the same time as each other. So what was that world like, given that we had so many um, different influential people living in this small proximity to each other? And how did each one of those um, maybe influence or impact um, what went on in the entire community? You know, I wanted to dig deeper and deeper into, you know, what did it feel like? When you're, when you're trying to research any town or any time period, look at the artists that lived during that era. You know, so you look at uh, Edmund Wilson, or you look at, um, you know, Count Basie, and you listen to the music, and the world just, comes alive again because he experienced it. You know, firsthand he experienced it. And they just bleeds through in his music. And it's, it's beautiful. Uh, and it's such a great, great thing for us to have to uh, pull from for inspiration. Count Basie's influence on the town today of course, we can see it everywhere, right? With Count Basie Center for the Arts and the Basie Academy. Um, and the arts is obviously a huge part of this community now, but the community that he lived in when he was growing up and playing music in these small nightclubs, jazz clubs, playing piano at the theater, um, there's, there's all these really interesting uh, moments that we can see through his lens uh, growing up. And when you listen to Count Basie's music, he was known for his rhythm section in his jazz. He basically pioneered um, and invented a new way of playing rhythm with an orchestra. And when you spend time in Red Bank and you listen to the sounds, you can hear that it's that pitter-patter of a train. Um, and that's where he gets that, that rhythm section from. And uh, it's really interesting when you listen to the kid from Red Bank. I've always, you know, wondered about what it was like, you know, when the whistle would blow at Eisner's factory and you would have people rushing to get to work or when it blows at the end of the day and people are leaving um, work and they're rushing to get to the train or rushing to get home or rushing to do whatever it is. If you listen to the music of the kid from Red Bank, it just, it just kind of encapsulates and perfectly um, gives you the energy of what that might have been like in this little town as 4,000 people are coming in and out of the factory and you have everybody running to meet the train. So when you listen to that song, you hear it, right? And at the end, you can almost hear like the whistle blow, right? You can almost hear da -da -da -da. All aboard! Gag station, stop! Little silver, yeah. Little silver. Well, you just can't do the story of Red Bank without having the Eisner family, and in particular, Sigmund Eisner in this story. Their impact on the town 
is just everlasting. He starts building this factory that becomes a mecca for, you know, not just the immediate community, but really for the whole country, right? I mean, they're making uniforms for uh, World War I. They're making uniforms for the Boy Scouts of America. And this is something that impacts the entire nation, right? And it, and it becomes one of the reasons why this community um, becomes a place where presidents are coming to. And it becomes a very important strategic location for the entire country. Look, you can't sugarcoat what that relationship was and that dynamic between Sigmund Eisner, the factory, and the Italian community. It was combative at times, like any relationship, but they needed to work together. So there's some really beautiful moments as you can now look back you know, we're a hundred plus years removed from the situation and we can kind of see how it impacted and how these key moments where the relationship changes, you know? I mean, they go from trying to bomb the factory and his home and striking against, um, you know, the factory and Eisner and the management for labor rights and they help change labor rights for the entire country and it's really kind of beautiful to see because they they needed each other and that impact again is everlasting on our entire nation and it's a really important story that that needs to be told because towards the end of his life you know during prohibition they needed each other again. And um, I think there's a sort of repairing of that relationship as they kind of come to bat for each other, you know, when things get really crazy um, because they're all being persecuted uh, to a certain degree. And you can see the community come together at moments and fight through their differences to better the community for us that are here now. So uh, it's really, really um, fun to do this deep dive and understand how we got to where we are today. I must be having fun The less we say about it The better I make it up as we go along and Feet on the ground Head in the sky It's okay I know nothing's wrong Nothing I, I've got plenty of time light in your eyes And you're standing here beside me I love the passing of time Never for money Always for love Cover up and say goodnight Say goodnight I'm already there I come home She lifted up her wings I guess that this must be the place And I can tell one from the other Did I find you where you find me? There was a time before we were born In someone else is the way I'll be Where I'm high 
in and out I'm singing to my mouth Now to all those kinds of people You got a face with a view I'm just an animal looking for a home Jealous in space for a minute or two When you love me till my heart sounds Love me till I'm there I tell a lot of I look to you Cover up the blank spots Hit me on the head and said I 